The James Chambers Show contains bad language. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got to do that one again. On this vote, the yeas are 51 and the nays are 49. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, as amended, is passed. This is not an honorable time or day for this committee or for democracy in America. That, that's, it is, we, we call it what it is. It's gaming the system. The Senate rules are so bizarre and so arcane that you have to sort of horseshoe a bill into that Senate reconciliation process. These first things we're going to be laying out are basically a gigantic cannon of money they are firing at the wealthiest people uh, in the country. Welcome to the James Chambers Show. I'm your host for this podcast, James Chambers. Yesterday, December 2nd, the Senate GOP passed their version of a tax reform bill at 2 a.m. on a 51 to 49 vote with no bipartisan support and no Democratic input and only one Republican holdout. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017 is the most sweeping tax code change since 1986 under the Reagan administration. Despite the bill's dramatic unpopularity with the public, the GOP in both the House and the Senate have been hell-bent on passing something, anything, before the end of the year. Without a legislative win, the entire year of 2017 would be a total political failure and a deep wound to the GOP made worse by the fact that the 2018 election season is about to heat up. So, under pressure, Congress rammed through a Frankenstein's monster of a bill ostensibly to lower taxes on the middle class and simplify the tax code. Well, what could go wrong? Well, as it turns out, almost everything. Both the House and the Senate tax bills are highly strategic and highly targeted measures. The GOP's cynicism and heartlessness is on full display here, And is that harsh? Well, of course. I've said before that I have a partisan view, but you don't need to be an ideologue to understand how deeply flawed this tax reform is. Every nonpartisan or bipartisan group who have evaluated this legislation have all come back with essentially the same result. It enriches the wealthy, it hurts the poor, and it gives only temporary relief to a portion of the middle class, all while blowing a $1.4 trillion hole in the national deficit. Look, if you're conservative, that's great. Just please take a look at what this bill is and what it's for and not by the party that's proposing it. Look at the legislation through the skeptical eye of an American, not a Republican. The effect of this bill will change quite literally 100% of the U.S. economy. Now, if I know anything about the majority of our audience here at the JC Show, it's that we, no matter our ideology, likely earn less than $100,000 a year, and likely far less than $100,000 a year, especially if you're single. Well, this tax plan will affect you. There's no doubt about that now. Once this tax bill overhaul gets through the conference committee, which it's supposed to reconcile the House and the Senate versions, it will make its way to the desk of President Trump. Who will sign it? The last time we tackled the basic information of the House reform bill, I threw a lot of numbers at you. So this time around, we're going to tackle the tangible things that you might stand to gain or lose under this tax plan. I'm also going to work through the flat out lies that are being spouted about this reform. And I'm sorry to say that if you're in the middle class or the lower income bracket, you're not going to be happy. So what I'm about to offer is a combination of information from multiple sources, including The Atlantic, Vox, Forbes, The Washington Post, C-SPAN, The New York Times, and quite a few others, actually. So let's just start off with the lies. Lie number one, the cuts pay for themselves. The Joint Commission on Taxation, or the JCT, estimated that the bill would add $1.4 trillion to the federal deficit over a decade. Taking into account any improved growth, it would still add a trillion dollars to the federal deficit. So fun fact, that's more than President Obama's stimulus bill, which saved the economy during the Great Recession. Lie number two, booming economic growth. The JCT shows 
that the tax bill would likely add less than one-tenth of one percentage point to the country's annual growth rate. And that's totaling just about 0.8% points of additional growth over 10 years. This is not record-setting by any measure. Line number three, lower corporate taxes will increase wages. I mean, I don't even know that I need to go over this one, but we're going to do it anyway. The Tax Policy Center estimates that workers would get about 20% of the value of corporate tax rate cuts. The rest would go to shareholders. Plus, of the money going to workers, much of it would flow to managers and executives, not minimum wage or average employees. This is classic trickle-down logic and its outcome. Fun fact. A Bank of America Merrill Lynch survey found that companies were super excited and planning for what they could do with their newfound cash. For example, they would pay down their debt and buy up their own shares, neither of which will help workers. Other executives have indicated that they would use the money for dividends, again, not at all likely to help the shift workers. So are you feeling the trickle? Mmm, warm. Lie number four. This hurts the rich. For the Tax Policy Center, the biggest benefits would go to families in the top 5% as soon as 2019. FYI, we're not in that bracket. The smallest benefits will be going to those in the lowest income quartile. That's you and me. By 2027, families in the lowest two income quartiles, meaning the lower 50% of income earners, would be receiving no benefit at all. Where are these gains going? Well, the biggest gains will be going to the top one-tenth of one percent, of course. And that's about one and a half million dollars per year income. I know the uber rich are hurting really bad right now. So maybe this tax bill should have been called the Poor Rise Up to Save the Rich Act of 2017. Two last notes on this point. The richest of the rich families exclusively benefit from the reduction or elimination in the estate tax, which would let individuals like Trump pass millions and millions of dollars more to their heirs, and that's tax-free. This is how aristocracy builds in a country. We're seeing the new rise of the robber barons right before our eyes. And regarding the Trumps, they stand to personally benefit to the tune of hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, according to a tax analysis. Although it's hard to know with much specificity, given that they refuse to release his tax returns. We're also going to eliminate tax breaks and complex loopholes taken advantage of by the wealthy. Who are they? I don't know. I think my accountants are going crazy right now. It's all right. Hey, look, I'm president. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I don't care. Yeah. Right. Lie number five. The middle class miracle. As I just pointed out, families in the middle of the income distribution will not see any benefits as of 2027. Families at the top would be paying far less in taxes, and many families at the bottom would actually be paying more. And that's you and me, friends. So let's step into the weeds for a second. So how are low-income people being targeted like this? Well, the bill changes the way that the tax brackets get adjusted year to year to account for inflation. So more families would get pushed into higher tax brackets sooner under the Republican plan. Therefore, they're paying more in taxes, even though their technical tax rates are lower. It's just it's accounting trickery. It's like saying to a 10 year old, well, we're going to readjust the way that your years are accounted for. So you're actually 14. Have fun in high school. Lastly, in this area. Republicans have gone after a number of provisions in current laws, such as the state and local tax deduction and the medical expense deduction, for instance. And that helps many middle class and upper middle class families. We'll get into that just a little bit later. Lie number six, repealing the individual mandate. <coughs> Destroying the Affordable Care Act has long been a white whale for the GOP. Now, finally, they have the weapon. According to the Congressional Budget Office, repealing the individual mandate would save $330 billion. Republicans want to seize that $330 billion and use it to finance their tax cuts. And that's just another accounting trick. Here's the way the money gets saved. 13 million fewer people get health insurance. That's right. Republicans are partially financing their tax cuts for the rich by taking health insurance from the poor or self-employed people. 
Meanwhile, the 13 million people driven out of insurance, among others who just choose to not buy insurance, will be younger and healthier, so the CBO expects insurance premiums to go up by at least 10% in the first year and likely increase each following year. So are you ready to see a premium spike? Fun fact, damage to the insurance market will not be limited to people who get their care through the ACA. Employer-based health coverage will be going up too. If you're feeling left out, don't worry. Everyone's health insurance premiums will go up, no matter where you buy it. Lie number seven, betrayal and income inequality. The bill supercharges inequality. According to the Tax Policy Center, by 2027, more than 75% of the tax cuts benefits will accrue to the top 5% of the income distribution. That's with more than 60% of those total gains going to the top 1%. This is shocking and devastating to our country. We are already at historic levels of income inequality, and this potential law will make it tremendously worse. And I mean this in all sincerity. We may not be able to undo the damage in our lifetime if this tax reform passes in the current form that it's in. This bill also betrays some of the White House's promises. President Trump. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. You know what that is, right? Steve Mnuchin and Gary Cohn have all promised that this plan will not be a tax cut for the rich. And as I've just laid out, this plan is a giant tax cut for the rich. So more than that, it's a fundamental betrayal of the American dream. We have been taught, or rather indoctrinated, that if you just work hard enough, smart enough, long enough that you can make it. You will become middle class. You will be able to raise a family. You'll be able to retire in relative comfort. And all of those promises are being betrayed. And we're watching it get markedly worse. So now let's talk about removing deductions. Here's just a few valuable deductions that many people rely on to manage their tax burden. The medical expense deduction. This bill would eliminate the deduction for all medical expenses. Who will this hurt? The elderly many of whom have traditionally relied on the deduction to pay for a portion of their nursing home care costs. And the chronically ill and disabled, including children, anyone who's had a major medical situation that tax year. The student loan deduction. The House's version of the tax bill would eliminate the deduction for student loan interest. Who will this hurt? Everyone with a student loan. Fun fact, approximately 70% of college grads leave with student debt, and that's over 44 million Americans who hold about $1.4 trillion in student loan debt. And soon, you'll get to play more on that debt. Happy days! Alimony payments. The House bill eliminates the deduction for alimony. Who gets hurt in this? Well, anyone who has to pay alimony but not the person who actually receives the alimony. Essentially, this punishes one person for divorcing the other, but it doesn't help add revenue to the government because the bill makes alimony tax-free to the recipient. So isn't that just morality mandated by the tax code? What about capital gains in your home? When you sell your home, provided that you have owned and used your home as your primary residence for two of two of the prior five years, you can exclude up to $500,000 of the gain if you're married or $250,000 if you're single. The House bill would require that in order to exclude the gain from the sale, you own and use the house as your primary residence for five of the prior eight years. Well, who will this hurt? Well, anyone who wants to sell their home or investment property for that matter, since most American workers don't have a pension anymore and their 401k system is tied to the volatility of the stock market, many people are relying on their property investments to help secure any kind of retirement. Fun fact, the tax bill will also eliminate the moving deduction. So just don't bother. Educational advancement. The bill would eliminate both the ability to receive tax-free educational assistance from your employer and the unreimbursed employee expense for professional education. So if the employer pays your tuition, well, now they get taxed. And if you pay your tuition, you don't get a deduction. So who will this hurt? Anyone who seeks to further their professional education. I mean, many businesses offer tuition assistance for people who want to further their careers within that company. 
And it's a total win-win. It builds loyalty to the company and allows major cost savings on higher education or training to the employee. This tax plan takes all of that incentive away from both the employer and the employee. And that's just fucking stupid. <sighs> state and local tax deductions. These deductions allow people to deduct your state and local taxes from your federal tax burden. This offsets the tax cost of people who live in high tax states like California or New York or New Jersey or Connecticut or many others. Just say goodbye to those deductions. Now, who does this hurt? The entire middle class and poor population living in any state that has high taxes. Having grown up in California, I know how important these deductions can be to a struggling family. It's this kind of clearly partisan targeting that makes this tax bill so politically charged and so unique in its appeal to conservatives. Built in is a massive transfer of wealth from blue states to the federal government, which then redistributes that money to red states. I thought Republicans were firmly against the redistribution of wealth. So I just, what, what changed? Child care assistance. An employer may pay directly or reimburse up to $5,000 for an employee's dependent care expenses with no tax levied to the employee. This allows the employee to seek care for a child under 13 on a tax-free basis. Well, that's gone. Well, who will this hurt? Working parents, especially working single parents. I mean, just how shitty is that? And teachers supply deductions. Under the House bill, this would go away entirely. The Senate ups the current deduction from $250 to $500. So who could this hurt? Teachers and students in all schools. It's bad enough that teachers have to go and spend their own money just to supply their classrooms with needed items, but to then lose their ability to recoup that money? I mean, even just a portion of it? The utter lack of respect for our education institutions is mind-boggling these days. Now, if we were an actual mature country, wouldn't we place value on our teachers and schools? That's for another show, I think. So there's the outline. Well, it's time for a theory or two. Theory one, the GOP needs a win at any cost. And to that end, they're willing to ramrod a horrible piece of legislation through Congress in hopes that they can regain power and earn some goodwill uh, with the base before the midterms, maybe even salvage 2018. Theory number two, Republicans are playing the long game. They know that this bill is horrible. They know that it will hurt people. They also know that it's not about this legislation. It's about keeping hold of pure ideology. When this tax code tanks the economy and hurts millions of Americans, well, they'll vote out the Republicans and sweep the Democrats into office, securing 2018 and 2020. But the Dems will be faced with cleaning up the mess left for them, thereby muddying their agenda before it can even get off the ground. And then they make the correct but hard choice of raising taxes on people who are already struggling. There is nothing more toxic than telling people you are going to raise their taxes, especially when they're hurting financially. Americans are notoriously short-sighted, and the GOP is banking on the idea that the only thing the base will remember is that the Democrats are the party of higher taxes, and the Republicans are the party of more money in your pocket no matter how the money left your pockets in the first place. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act may be the long con that the GOP needs to regain power in 2024 and 28. And we'll see. If this theory holds, half their work is already done for them. I hope this clarifies at least a portion of what's going on in Washington right now. Our tax code is one of the only ways that we keep the American playing field somewhat financially level. We will always have a class system here in the U.S., rich, poor, and in between. And we need a system in place to keep the class divides in check. That helps foster a healthy, functional economy. Remember, taxes are not a burden, and they're not stealing. Taxes are the price we pay to live in a safe, stable country. We pay taxes to have usable roads and bridges and firefighters and police officers and city planners and public schools and so, 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 so much more. You know, maybe things don't always run smoothly, but these are all systems created by people. 
and they will therefore have problems from time to time. Like I pay taxes because I recognize that living together requires cooperation, and I think that you do too. Having said that, we need to keep our governments accountable since they are managing our money. Promoting tax reform, therefore, is not inherently a bad idea. Far from it, in fact. All systems need to be revised and corrected from time to time, but this is not that. We're being scammed. The GOP is perpetuating a fraud on the American population that explodes income inequality and blows a gaping hole in the national debt and lines the pockets of multinational corporations at the expense of poor and middle class American citizens. The sad part is, they know it. They have to know it. Every watchdog group has warned the public of the danger posed by this tax bill, yet the Republicans don't seem to care about the facts or reality. As liberal or conservative citizens, we are all going to be affected by this tax overhaul, and unless you are already rich, it's going to hurt you. Now is not the time for blind party allegiance. Call Congress. Call your senators and your House members. Don't wait. The conference committee process is the last chance we have to make sure this destructive piece of legislation is stopped. Call today. Here's the telephone number to the United States Capitol switchboard. 202-224-3121. 202-224-3121. But call responsibly. Find your senator or representative first. Okay? Go to usa.gov slash elected dash officials. It's easy to search and you can find all of your representatives and your senators for your state. Make it easy for the switchboard. Look, be courteous, be fair, but be firm. Stop the Tax Cut and Jobs Act. Thank you for listening to the Tax Cuts and Go Fuck Yourself episode of The James Chambers Show. And thank you for all of the amazing reporting done by the sources I mentioned at the top of the piece. And we always want to hear from you. Hit us up on Twitter at RealJCShow or email the show at RealJCShow2017 at gmail.com. You're all amazing. Thank you for listening. Catch you next time on The James Chambers Show. Holy fuck, Knuckles, that's going to take some editing.